A&T football team improves to 2-0 after beating a Southern Conference team for the second week in a row. Hello and welcome to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm your host, Jordan Carlisle. We'll get to the highlights of the Aggies' win over Elon this past weekend in a moment. But first, news on a pair of Aggie football players who received national recognition this past week. A&T punter Dominic Frescura was named the Sports Network National Special Teams Player of the Week following the Aggies' season opening win over Appalachian State. The freshman punted nine times for a single game record, 424 yards in the win. Frescaro was also named MIAC Rookie of the Week, also receiving recognition for his performance in the win over App State, Aggie linebacker Devontae Grant. Grant was named MIAC Defensive Player of the Week. The senior recorded eight tackles, broke up a pass, and had a tackle for a loss, in addition to returning an interception for a touchdown. It was the third pick six of his career, trying a school record. So that brings us to this past Saturday, the Aggies home opener and a chance for many fans to get their first look at this year's team. And as you can imagine, the grills were smoking, the stories were being told, and everyone was having a great time tailgating in the A&T game zone. Trevana Williams was there and she gives us a little flavor of what it was like. I'm Southern boy, I love it, burnt. Many Aggie alums come out to tailgate for different reasons. I uh, got pork chop, rocks, hot dogs. Some do it to show their support for the A&T football team. Oh, I'm impressed so far. Yeah. So we, far, so good. We beat Ab State. Others do it for the tradition and to keep the Aggie pride alive. And why did we tailgate? I mean, come on. I mean, it's just it's Aggie pride. That's I mean, it. That's what it's about. There were those who were there simply to enjoy the amazing atmosphere. And we got some roast fish, we got uh, barbecue chicken, fried chicken, we got smoked jerk turkey wings, grilled Hello. vegetables, yes. so we got it all. You have everything from food, fun, and games. The first tailgate of the season produced a very good outcome, bringing together Aggie alums, families, and friends, ready to cheer their boys on. Go! I'm Trevana Williams for the Aggie Sports Report. Thanks, Trevana. There certainly is a lot of optimism about this year's team. The Aggies look to improve their record to 2-0 on the year as they hosted Elon in their home opener. Danica Wissett has the story. After a scoreless first quarter, A&T's Cody Jones kicked the 32-yard field goal, putting the Aggies on the scoreboard. Later in the quarter, the Aggies add to their lead. Quarterback Lewis Kendall throws to DeMonte Brown for a 60-yard touchdown, making the score 10 to nothing. Elon's John Gallagher converted a 33-yard field goal, putting Elon on the scoreboard. A&T's Cody Jones scored the next six points, kicking a 38-yard and a 33-yard field goal for the Aggies. The Aggies lead 16-3 in the third quarter. Elon pulled within six when Mike Quinn hit Tracy Coppage for a 41-yard score late in the third quarter, cutting the lead 16-10. But the Aggies sealed the victory with just one minute left in the game when Dominic Drake scored on a one-yard dive into the end zone. The North Carolina A&T State University Aggies defeated the Phoenix of Elon 23-10. The Aggies advanced to 2-0 for the season and 21-10 for home openers. Next up, the Bison of Howard University. I'm Donika Whitsett with the Aggie Sports Report. The Aggie offense sure did come up big and not only on that last drive but several times throughout the game. Ian Zier takes a closer look. The Aggies offense wasn't much to brag about last season, but they displayed their dominance against Elon in their home opener. Senior quarterback Lewis Kendall struggled early on, but finished the game completing 52% of his passes for 288 yards and a touchdown. With the score 16-10 late in the fourth, Kendall led the Aggies on a six-minute, 80-yard touchdown drive that put the game out of Elon's reach, 
The Aggies start the season 2-0 despite not being able to practice in the spring and having to adapt to a new offensive coordinator. Coach Broadway doesn't focus on those problems though, he keeps the game plan simple. The Aggies have an extra week to prepare for their next game against Howard and the offense and defense have already proven to be formidable against non-conference opponents. The next time you'll see the Aggies play will be on ESPNU, a stage the Aggies are more than ready for. I'm Ian Mitchell Deer for the Aggie Sports Report. Thanks, Ian. A&T will have this Saturday off as this is their bye week. Their next game will be Thursday night, September 26th, when they host Howard to open up conference play. The game will be televised on ESPN. We'll have more on that matchup later in the show. Right now, we have to take our very first break, but when we come back, we'll fill you in on how the A&T Cross Countries did at the Elon Invitational this past weekend. Plus, we'll hear from sophomore volleyball player Alina McDaniel. Don't go away. The Aggie Sports Report will be right back after this. This is an A&T Historical Minute, and I am William Robson. The Corbin Sports Center opened December 3, 1978. It is named after Ellis F. Corbett, a 1931 graduate of A&T. Officially known as Mr. A&T, his official title was Sports Information Director. He performed many other roles on campus, including dorm counselor, and he was a member of the board in control of intercollegiate athletics. The three-story complex includes office space, classrooms, and two racquetball courts, in addition to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Corbett also houses many of the human performance and leisure study courses at A&T. The Corbett Sports Center is the current home of the North Carolina A&T men and women's basketball teams and the swimming team. This has been a historical minute and I am William Robbs. The College of Arts and Sciences is the largest college in North Carolina A&T in terms of students, faculty, and number of courses taught. Our students gather to research the causes of climate change and meteorology, study human depression and social work and biology, and perform on Broadway. The university and community relax in the cradle of arts and sciences through WNAA, the University Gallery, our HDTV studio, and the award-winning University Marching Band. Visit us online. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm your host, Jordan Carlisle. While the A&T football team hosted Elon here on Saturday, the Aggie cross country teams made the short drive down I-40 to Elon to compete in the Elon Invitational. Alana Covington lets us know how they did. Thanks, Jordan. Both men and women's team placed third. On the men's team, freshman Frankie Mills was placed 12th individually with a time of 27 minutes and 11 seconds. Darren White finished right behind Mills with a time of 27 minutes and 12 seconds. And junior Christian Harrison finished with a time of 27 minutes and 43 seconds. On the women's side, Janessa Ben led the Aggies finishing the 5K race in 20 minutes and 11 seconds, placing 24th overall. Janae Farrell was very close to Ben finishing the race in 20 minutes and 33 seconds. Natalia Rochelle Bygrave ran a personal best time, finishing in 22 minutes and 41 seconds. Very impressive, ladies. Both teams will not be running this week, but will be preparing for the Charlotte Cross Country Invitational on Saturday, September 28th. I'm Alana Covington for the Aggie Sports Report. Thanks, Alana. Aggie runners will be competing in the Charlotte Invitational this weekend and will be in Cary, North Carolina on October 5th for the Robert Shoemake HBCU Challenge. The A&T volleyball team was in Wilmington over the weekend competing in the UNCW Volleyball Classic. On Friday, the host Seahawks defeated our Aggies in three straight games. 
Sophomore Ashley Johnson recorded a match high 12 digs. It was her fifth match with double figure digs this year. Freshman Jillian Nobles finished with a season high eight kills in the Aggies second match versus Western Carolina. Liz Martino finished with 21 assists and Ashley Johnson had 21 digs. In their final match versus UNC Asheville, Alina McDaniel came up big once again, recording 23 kills and 18 digs. McDaniel was named to the all-tournament team. The Aggie volleyball team has only one senior and no juniors, so a lot of younger players are getting some very valuable experience. One such player, sophomore Alina McDaniel, has started off the season strong. McDaniel has now been named to the all-tournament team three times. Ian Thompson introduces us to this super sophomore. Hi, I'm Alina McDaniel, sophomore outside hitter from Indianapolis, Indiana. Growing up in Indianapolis, Alina played several sports. When I was very little, I played like soccer and did gymnastics and basketball as well. Eventually, she decided to focus all of her attention to volleyball. I love the intensity of the game and just the passion on the court. I enjoy winning. <laughs> Earlier this month, Alina helped lead the Aggies to their first September win in three years. She has been named to the all-tournament team three times already. It feels good because I have confidence that we're, we're going to do good things in the future. And right now we're playing a, a lot, against a lot of experienced players. So that's just a good sign for the future. She helps with her teammates. Um, and she came here to, to build this program. So she's got strong character. Uh, and she's got a feistiness about her that uh, wants to win. Alina's teammates also recognized her natural leadership ability and voted her as one of the team captains. When she had to say something, she'd say it. She wasn't real commanding about it. She would try to say it in the nicest way possible. And like, we respect that. Vocal and lead by example. I think a lot of times as a leader, I have to step out of my boundaries and say things that others would not be com as comfortable saying. The team was pretty unanimous about selecting her as a captain, which proves that everyone likes her, they respect her, uh, and they, they want to follow her. Off the court, Alina is a biology major who spends most of her time studying. Maybe I'm leaning toward, more towards medical school. I'm not sure exactly what type of doctor I'd like to be yet, but hopefully after I get some interns and some more shadowing, I'll make up my mind. Alina also plans to aid the Aggies in several wins. I'm Ian Thompson for the Aggie Sports Report. Now it's time to introduce you to this week's Fan of the Week. Check out Soraya Smith. She's got her pom-poms and she's rooting on the Aggie football team this past Saturday night. Soraya's favorite player is linebacker Devontae Grant. Well, he better be. Devontae Grant is Soraya's uncle. Thanks, Soraya. You are this week's Fan of the Week. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to look for our cameras the next time you're at a game, and maybe you can be on the Aggie Sports Report, too. We'll certainly be looking for you. That's our show for this week. I'm Jordan Carlisle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.